Earlier this month, streamer Habu speed ran Terraria at GDQ and got a really impressive time of 1 hour and 41 minutes. Now, even though I've played a lot of Terraria, I would still consider myself a very casual player, and I watched this whole stream with my jaw to the floor. And it got me thinking about the methods that speedrunners use to break Terraria, and how much of that could actually translate to tips for casual players. I don't know about you, but I've played a lot of Terraria, and every once in a while, I want things to go a little bit quicker. So in today's video, I've gathered seven tips directly from Habu that should help you break Terraria in your own little way. So this first tip is a clever use of the housing tool to hopefully help you find pyramids a little easier. Now, I did a couple tests with this and it seems to only really work on a small world where pyramids spawn a little higher up. And all you need to do is use it and click underground in your desert. And if you are lucky, you may notice that it changes to this room is too big. And that's because it sensed that there's a room down there. And if you're lucky, that might be your pyramid. And yeah, take a look at that. There's the pyramid. Now this trick was specifically used by Habu to lower the time of the speed run by not having to rely on guide voodoo doll demons. But I feel like if you are in a rush, this is very handy. So one of the things you can do is you can make a home for your guide slightly above hell. And then if you need the wall of flesh, all you got to do is drop them straight into the lava and it works like a guide voodoo doll. And it's super convenient for refights too because all you need to do is patch up the house, wait for the guide to move in and you don't need to rely on a demon. This next one is called a bed warp and it allows you to set your spawn point on a bed but then have the ability to go back to your regular world spawn and then back to the bed which currently isn't possible in Terraria without this little trick. Now, I think this one would be especially useful for those that have maybe built a house in a different biome that they intend to spend a good amount of time in, but they've forgotten something at the regular world spawn. They want to go back quick and they don't want to have to walk all the way back. So the idea is that you have a perfectly normal house, which we're going to break, which disables the bed, and then we're going to repair the house as we recall. Sounds a little strange. Let me show you. So right now, this is my spawn point. But if we break this corner piece, it no longer recognizes this as my spawn point And this bed is no longer active. So how we're going to repair this is by building a platform upwards and then dropping sand down to repair the house, which is this corner piece here. So then all you need to do is drop the sand recall at the same time. And we've gone back to our regular spawn point. But if we recall again, we are now in the bed. But before we continue, let me tell you about some speedrunning you can do in your own life with the sponsor of today's video, HelloFresh. Listen, I'm 25 and I've been planning my own meals for seven years now. And I'll be real with you, I'm kind of over it. To be completely honest, I kind of dread going to the shops, just buying ingredients for the same four meals, or even trying to save time by ordering takeout, which is costing a fortune and isn't exactly aligning with my New Year's goals. HelloFresh is here to save the day though, as they send delicious recipes and fresh ingredients right to your door. Today, I made their chicken in creamy tarragon sauce, and it was fantastic, and also something I'd never made before. It's fast too, from start to finish, the whole thing took me like 30 minutes, and I had a lot of fun while making it because it was something new. And at the end, I felt really accomplished. I hadn't actually felt that in the kitchen in a long time. With HelloFresh, eating well in the new year can be stress-free and delicious. With over 35 weekly recipes, they have the options you're looking for to help you achieve your goals. You can choose calorie smart and carb smart recipes, or even customize select meals by swapping proteins or sides, upgrading your proteins, or adding proteins to a veggie dish. It's super easy to get into a rut in the kitchen and just rely on those unhealthy meals that you know, or just ordering takeout. And if that sounds like you, then I can't recommend HelloFresh enough. So if you want to try it, go to HelloFresh.com and use code CHIPPY21 for 21 free meals plus free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com, code CHIPPY21 for 21 free meals and free shipping. And if you do try it, let me know what you cooked in the comment section below. Now, this next one isn't necessarily a trick, but it's a great thing to know if you want to speed up time in the dungeon when you're only looking for a Cobalt Shield or a Muramasa. If you're like me, you might be in the habit of heading down to the bottom of the dungeon and gathering a couple of golden keys and then just opening every chest at random. And the thing you need to know is that loot actually spawns in a set order in the dungeon. And if you're looking for a Cobalt Shield or a Muramasa, 
it's more than likely that that's going to be one of the first chests that you encounter in the dungeon. So the set order for this is apparently meant to be Muramasa, Cobalt Shield, Aqua Scepter, Blue Moon, Magic Missile, Valor, Golden Key, Handgun. Now, I tested this a bunch of times and I can't get it to spawn in that exact order, but I have now found Cobalt Shields a lot quicker. So to demonstrate this, we are heading underground on a brand new world and we are going to open the first locked chest that we find and it should contain either a Muramasa or a Cobalt Shield or an Aqua Scepter. Let's actually put this one to the test. All right, here it is. Let's open it up and see. It's a Cobalt Shield. Yeah, I wish I knew this about 11 years ago. Now, an essential part to every speedrun is the ability to take down a boss quickly. And I don't think I've seen anything as fun as this. So with this method, you'll be able to take down the destroyer in like five or six seconds. It's kind of wild. So to pull it off, you need to go to an area where there's no blocks around you. And that's because we're going to be forcing the destroyer to spawn every single segment on a single block. And with that, we're going to be using dynamite to take down the boss. So this is best done in an ocean, so you are completely away from everything. A great little tip that Habu showed off is that you can actually use junction boxes to place blocks mid-air. So very handy if you don't have an ice rod yet. So to get this started, you need to place down an indestructible block, which for us will just be adamantite. There's, there's quite a few in Terraria. Now what we need to do is we need to create an area where we're going to hook up to just above so that we can rain down dynamite and then we're going to take down the destroyer. To further explain it, if you don't get the concept, essentially the destroyer needs a block to latch onto when it spawns in the game. Now if you're up here, it's not going to spawn down here, so instead it will pick the only block it can find, which is this one. And all of the segments will be in the exact same place at the exact same time which is how the dynamite manages to do so much damage. Right, so let's throw it down, and once we hear explosions, we'll spawn in the fight. Okay, there we go. So as you can see, the dynamite is doing its work, and it's gone. It's wild. It's just, it's just so cool. Like, what a way to kill the destroyer. Now, when it comes to speedrunning, a bad reforge can make quite the difference when compared to a good reforge. And let's say you're speeding through Terraria, and you don't have a lot of money, well, how do you guarantee that you get a good reforge? Well, Shimmer is here to your advantage, because whenever you throw an item into Shimmer, it gets deconstructed into the materials that you crafted it with. And every time you craft an item in Terraria, well, you have a random chance at a good or a bad reforge. So what you can do is you can say, throw your sword into Shimmer, get back the bars that you crafted it with, and craft up a new one and just kind of go from there and see is it any good is nimble all right well it might be and for the final one today let's talk about a crazy method to instantly take down plantera now i purposely left this one until last because visually it's quite uncomfortable to watch so if you're sensitive to strobing images or just screen shake or fast moving images it's probably time to click away because like it will be for plantera it's about to get uncomfortable now, I'm not a very technical player when it comes to Terraria, as you probably know. Even though I have a lot of hours, I'm more casual. So I'm going to explain this really simply. I don't know all the technical jargon and numbers. All I know is you go fast and Plantera dies. It's a really cool method. So we're going to be using the Jousting Lance for this one. And for anybody that's never used it before, because a lot of players, like myself, don't ever really use it in an adventure, it's a weapon that gets a damaging buff the faster that you move. So to get the maximum amount of damage out of the lance, all you need to do is make the player move fast. And how do you do that? Well, you abuse minecarts. So to demonstrate this, it's actually really easy. Place down two rails, hammer them twice so that they're both bumpers. Get on, head a little bit to the left or to the right, and allow your player to build up momentum. And this can get even worse and I'm going to jump off now because the screen shake is pretty bad. Now for the Plantera fight, what we're going to be doing is essentially combining this with teleporters. So the idea is that you're going to be bumping between two bumpers here, but we're also going to be using pressure plate minecart tracks so that we're also teleporting away from Plantera at the same time. Because we're here and there, Plantera will be rested nicely in the middle and you'll just be using your joust like this, which will now have 
a much higher damage because you're moving so quickly. So the setup for this is actually super simple. All you need is two rails on either side of a teleporter and a pressure plate one in the middle. Hit these end ones twice so that they become bumpers and then do the exact same thing on the other side and wire it all together. Once again, this is going to look very uncomfortable, but this is how it looks in motion. You want to build up a lot of speed like this and hold out your lamps so that you're damaging Plantera. All right, so let's give it a go and see how awesome this is actually in motion. So we'll wait a second for Plantera to, to come down our way. All right, here she is. Let's see. Does it actually work? Yeah, it does. And it's it's incredible. It is actually incredible. Now, I butchered this. Now, listen, <laughs> Habu, you never told me anything about Medusas. So the hitbox with the jousting lance is, is honestly really strange. Like, it's not exactly what you expect. And that's it for today. If you want to check out Habu's full Terraria speedrun at GDQ, I highly encourage it. It's going to be linked down below. Unfortunately, because I don't know too much about Terraria speedrunning, I wasn't able to credit each person that maybe came up with these methods. But I do know that there is a Terraria speedrunning Discord, so I'll leave a link to that down below if you want to learn more about speedrunning.